I keep hearing that you guys are an extremely smart crowd, probably one of the most intelligent crowds in all of Dallas youth. Raise your hand if you're like really smart. Yeah, okay, that's what I thought. So if you think you guys are so smart, let's start with the really difficult questions. Who here thinks that they can solve hunger? I saw maybe a few hands, okay. How about ending, sorry, poverty? Who here thinks they can solve hunger? And teachers, what about you? Do you think you can solve the education system? Well, quite frankly, I mean, if you have the solution, please come talk to me afterwards, but I don't think anyone has the solution. And no, I didn't come here today to just ask you questions that I don't think you have the answers to, but rather I came here to suggest a way in which we can get those solutions, and that's by being a catalyst. So what even is a catalyst? Everyone close your eyes. Think about everything going on inside your body right now. Maybe you had like this really big lunch and your stomach's kind of gurgling and it's embarrassing because there's this cute boy or girl next to you, but whatever, they can't hear you with your eyes closed. Or maybe you had a giant cookie and your eyes are already open looking at me because you have so much energy, which is fine, everyone open your eyes. But regardless of the situation, all the reactions happening inside your bodies right now are only made possible by catalysts. Catalysts are the special little sparks that makes potential reactions occur, and without them, they often cease to exist. What's so amazing about catalysts is that they're not just inside of our bodies. Rather, they are all around us. They are the people who are initiating positive change, the ones who are not content to sit on the sidelines and do nothing about what they're passionate about. Rather, it's the people that are the first ones to raise their hands, to say something, to stand up, to do something in their communities that makes an impact. What I am saying is that the scholars, the politicians, the peacemakers of our generation will not be remembered because they had the solutions to the problems I asked you at the beginning of our time here. Rather, they will be remembered because they were brave enough to even begin. They will be remembered because they are catalysts. So perhaps you're catching on, you're realizing that I'm telling you that you can do something beyond your wildest aspirations if you just begin. And actually, four years ago, I sat in this stage, I was actually in the third row, and I left TEDx SMU feeling inspired. I was thinking, I wanna be a catalyst, I wanna do something amazing in my community, but I was left with one haunting question, and that was, how? How was a 16-year-old girl going to do anything that mattered to anyone in her community? Well, after two years of fondering around, trying to figure it out, I've come back to TEDx SMU to tell you three simple steps so that you can be a catalyst and you can make amazing change. First, you must ask for help. Second, you must fail. And third, you must do what you love and do it right now. Let's start from the beginning. Ask for help. You cannot be afraid to ask. And I know sometimes adults are intimidating. Um, perhaps they might seem condescending or you might be feeling scared because you're so much younger, or perhaps they just smell bad, which is actually a side effect of old age, but whatever the issue is, just start small, start with your friends. I started with my two friends, Christina and Angie, and we put our heads together, and for us, the way we were going to catalyze change in our community was through art. And soon we were pitching it to more friends. We had Avra, and then Zoe, and Nicholas, and then Fair, Zach, and Aramy. And we had this huge group of students who were interested in what we were doing. And now we had the confidence to go talk to bigger groups. We've worked with Union Coffee, Big Thought, Spark Mural Labs, adults who were previously intimidating because we thought they wouldn't take us seriously. Rather, our age helped us. They were interested in us because we were young. We had the ability to make an impact. So when you ask for help, yes, you will receive some no's. There is no doubt about it. There's gonna be people that won't give you the time of the day. But for every single no that you receive, you will also find someone that will be your catalyst. For us, that was local nonprofit Big Thought. And instead of disregarding three teenage girls, they said, shoot for the moon and make us say no. But if you never ask for help, you won't even have that opportunity. So you must take that first step. Now, you heard me say that two-letter word earlier, no. And we're lucky because that's essential in becoming a catalyst, and that is that you must fail. Now, 
it sounds backwards, but you know, a lot of people say that you shouldn't fail and you should strive for success, but it's actually backwards because the equation to success is known. People say, oh, there is no one pathway, but I disagree. It's fail plus fail plus fail, 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 and fail some more equals success. And if you don't believe me, there's no reason to, but you can take it from some figures in history. Walt Disney, arguably the most creative man who lived in the past century, was fired from his first job because he lacked imagination. And if that doesn't convince you, then perhaps let's look at Harry Potter. J.K. Rowling was disregarded by a dozen publishers before she sold 400 million copies worldwide. You can bet those publishers are pretty sad right about now. <laughs> and if neither of those examples convince you, take it from a famous inventor. When asked about his failures in creating the light bulb, he said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. You see, if we think about failure in this way, not as obstacles that are insurmountable or impenetrable, but rather as things we can learn from, then we will easily reach the other side of the equality. But if we are too scared to even take that first failure, then we will never make it to success. Now, the last step in being a catalyst is perhaps the most difficult, and that is do what you love and do it right now. Now, I say this is so hard because in this world, we have so many interesting things. You saw amazing speakers today. You're probably on fire with all the amazing things you can do in your school, your community, your family, whatever it is. But I implore you, after this day, go home and think about what is that one thing that you can do for hours that only feels like five minutes? And when you find that one thing, hold on to it because it is special. It is what you were designed to do. The second part of this is do it right now. I feel like I was told you must graduate from junior high, then high school, college, vet school, dental school, med school, law school, whatever it was before I could actually do something. But I'm here to tell you that is all wrong. You can do something right now. That's because success is not a number. It is not an age. It is not an IQ score, an SAT score, a GPA. Success is determined by your ability to ask for help, to fail, and to do what you love, and do it right now. Now, like I said, I was sitting here just four years ago in that third row, and I left feeling so inspired. So I'm encouraging you guys to let this moment, let this day, this talk right here be your catalyst to do whatever it is that you want to do. Take confidence knowing that Anything is possible if you put your mind to it. I am a catalyst. You all are catalysts. Thank you.